presents the most powerful sport on earth, the Redman TNT All-American Pulling Series. Turning the power on. Tracks is brought to you by the heartbeat of America, today's Chevy truck. See the lightning, it's on the road. Welcome to Power Tracks. We're in the Omni, Atlanta, Georgia, and Army Armstrong. We're about to see for the first time in 1989 the modified four-wheel drives. A lot of the big boys are here. Tony Olstein comes. He's a Georgia boy with the Ford. Your national champions here, Howard Lewis, a couple of bad Fords out of South Florida. That'll be the killer and the outlaw Ford. That's just four of them. A whole bunch more are going to be chasing these red man points this evening in Atlanta. And also our first look of the year at the modified tractor division. Pat Frills comes out to defend his national championship. Fred Freeman's here, John Powell, all the big guns. They're going after those points. It all starts tonight in Atlanta, Richard. Well, it sounds like a super show, and it's coming your way straight ahead on Power Tracks on ESPN. We're back with another test of Chevy versus Ford. And this one you can do at home. Has another great crowd on hand this afternoon, Army. They're going to be seeing two levels of competition. And we are going to kick it off with the ever-popular modified four-wheel drive. One of the most popular classes in the sport because everybody drives some kind of vehicle and whatever you drive will be represented in competition. Draw on the number one spot, Richard. A Georgia Rebel truck, Mr. Tony Olstein. Now, this position is very, very important in the sport. The number one drawing position is determined by the luck of a draw. The reason it's so important the rest of the field will decide whether or not the sled will be set official by this run of Olsteen. He's out of Georgia. If anybody can read the clay, it should be him. And I noticed something kind of interesting from your viewpoint. Can you check the angle of the sled, Richard? He has set the sled up on the left side of the track. So, as you well know, the pullers come out before the competition and check the track out. He feels like the, the clay substance on the left side must be a little bit firmer for him to get a better pull. Really tight on the left side. Let's see what's going to happen. He rolls out, black out of the chain, up on the RPM, rolls off the clutch. Here we go, the first shot, the Georgia Rebel on a stamp pull, which would be the official pull. Let's see what happens on the other side of the 150. 166.68, that is a good pull for Tony Osteen and the Georgia Rebel. Now he has got a decision to make. He can either accept the pull as official, or he can decline the pull and come back in later competition. Now all the other drivers here to compete today are going to be keeping an eye on the decision. So let's go trackside right now. Army, tell us what Tony Osteen's going to do. Well, Richard, Tony Osteen draws that number one spot. Tony, we received word of 166. Are you going to keep the pull? Uh, yes, sir, I am. Think the track's going to get a little bit better or go away? That number one spot in Atlanta is kind of a touchy place to be. Well, the pull felt real good, and uh, that was a pretty fair distance, uh, so I thought I'd just take it. Uh, it felt pretty good coming down the track. We'll keep an eye on it. Good luck to you. Thank you a lot. All right, so the former national champion, Tony Osteen, has established a distance to beat, and our next puller out, Carl Staples out of Moyoc, North Carolina, in risky business. It's a 1986 Chevrolet, but he's got an interesting engine army. It was built by a very famous puller by the name of Jim Lyons. Jim Lyons out of Louisville, Kentucky, who also competes in this category, driving the awesome stitches vehicles. Builds engines on the side, but he can flat build you some horsepower in. Carl's kind of an interesting young man. Came to this sport by virtue of motorcycle racing. He was injured in a motorcycle accident. Couldn't ride the bike, so he went truck pulling. Chevrolet going after Ford. The first showdown of the evening. Risky business. Going after the Georgia Rebel. I don't believe he's going to do it, Richard. He also lined up on the left side of the track, but nowhere close to the lead distance. Carl Staples, 148.4. So that is not going to be near enough to get up there in the top five. I'd say five is with this competition we've got today. Yeah, the field is definitely tough. The track conditions, I think, is going to dictate who's going to win here. Now, Army, with this Georgia clay, as we get ready for our next puller, Tommy Holman, the Saturday night driller out of Wayne, Ohio. But back to this track, what's the book on the track? Will it stay good or will it get bad? As a rule, the book most drivers have show it's a horsepower track, but right now we're not seeing that. Fight seems to be going away now. Of course, everybody is still working that left lane to death, trying to get on the other side of a 1-6-6. They're not 
not going to do it. But a better distance here for Tommy Holman, 159.15. That is going to be good enough for second place right now, but I'll be truthful with you. I thought that big 640 cubic inch engine might take him a little bit further. He could have problems. What about it, Army? Well, Richard, we got something for the Dodge people to cheer about. A good, strong run for you, but it looked like you're having some kind of problems at the end of the run. What exactly happened on the truck? Yeah, we lost our power steering down there about the 100 foot mark. Well, you're sitting currently in the number three spot. Do you think you're going to be able to finish up in that spot? Well, I, I think the track's going to get bad. It's going to break down a little bit. All right, so Tommy Holman, as we see the end of the replay of his pool, does not think the track is going to get better. That is good news for Tony Osteen, our current leader. He may be able to hold on to win it all as we get ready next for George Ritter out of Red Cliff, Kentucky, and the Ritter's Critter. Big block Chevrolet, Richard. Notice what he does. He is not working the left side. He's going to be pushing the cushion out of the middle right now, trying to find a new bite for the truck. I don't know. Not going to be good enough to try to go on the other side of a 1.66. I don't know what he has, Richard. 151.73, a nice distance, but nowhere close to our leader, Tony Osteen. And when we come back, we'll find out if anyone can take over the lead from the Georgia Rebel with more of TNG Motorsports. Franks continues in the Omni Atlanta, Georgia. This is the modified 4x4 competition. Our next driver coming out is Charlie Lowe out of West Palm Beach, Florida. He is in the Ford Killer 2. Now, it's interesting. Our leader this afternoon thus far, Tony Osteen, also drives the Ford, the Georgia Rebel. As a matter of fact, we've got quite a few Ford competitors here. Army spent time with them this afternoon in the Omni. Well, Richard, a couple of the interesting pullers that go with us on the national tour out of West Palm Beach, Florida, all the way down to the bottom of the state of Florida. They both drive Fords. On my left, Russell DeForest. He'll be driving the Outlaw Ford. On my right, Charlie Lowe, the killer Ford. Now, Russell, you and Charlie running the Ford camp, do you have to travel together? Do you work together? What kind of relationship do you have? Because on the track, you're definitely competitors. What about going up and down the highways? Well, we work on both trucks together. We travel together. We stay together. But when we get on the track, we're on our own. Charlie, West Palm Beach, Florida is known as a very affluent community. There's a lot of money down there. Can you fellas with these Fords run and beat these Chevrolets? Yeah, we've got enough money to burn them Chevrolets. So you, you've got no doubt in your mind that the South Florida Ford can beat all the Chevys? Yeah, if money will do it, we can do it. Boy, Richard, I wish I had that problem. The killer believes in the product. The outlaw believes in the product. We're going to follow them all year long on ESPN to find out exactly if they can do what they say they can do. I'll tell you something, Army, after watching that interview, I bet there's a lot of Chevrolet fans out there that would love to strangle Charlie Lowe, the Ford Killer 2. Lowe takes a shot, work in the middle of the track. Actions speak louder than words, and the action is not there. All the Chevrolet fans are sitting in the crowd with a smile on their face right now, Richard. 136.91, the distance. That goes to prove money can't buy everything because it did not bring a good pull to Charlie Lowe. And coming out next, if they've got to have a favorite favorite Ford driver on the circuit. This next guy would be in. Roger Crawford out of Granville, Ohio. The TRW Bandit. He and his wife Deborah travel the circuit. The Red Man Circuit with us extensively. He's a fine guy off the track as well as a great competitor on. You know, he teamed up with TRW to make a whole lot of horsepower for the Ford camp. He goes about in a little bit off to the left of the track. Crawford making the horsepower, trying to get out of the side of a one six six. Not there. Oh, but a good distance. 154.60 for Roger Crawford as he runs a big 670 cubic inch in that Ford Bandit machine. That is going to put him up there probably close to the top five in the standings right now as our next driver coming out is James Hamilton, a Kentucky boy out of Bardstown and gone bananas. Green light comes on the tree. Hamilton to go up on the RPMs on the Mountain Motor Chevrolet out of the Bluegrass State. Let's see what's going to happen. He believes in Chevrolet. A little bit of a bobble, Richard, right on the circle. And now he's out the horsepower and is working in the middle of the track. Look, a great shot, Richard. Awfully good. 166.16 for James Hamilton, the Chevrolet gone bananas out of Kentucky. That was a super run for the Chevy. Army, he's got to be happy with it. Richard James Hamilton with a gone banana Chevrolet had a bad luck of the draw. He pulled in the middle of the field, but I was just telling him it was almost a perfect run. 
the horsepower is there. It just didn't seem like you had a track to go on. Is that the case? I think that's the case, most of it. The chassis looked like it worked perfect. The engine seemed to bobble a little bit on the starting line, but when you called on it, it came up. A good run, it just, no, you couldn't put the horsepower to the track. No, it just, it just wasn't nothing there to pull on. James, you think you can win this championship this year? You've followed this tour for quite a few years. You've been a man to beat. Can you win a national championship in 89? I don't know. I can't. I, I might be able to. Well, I'll tell you, if he keeps running like that, he just may win him a championship in second place. Now, we get ready for another Chevrolet. It is Howard Lewis, a high roller out of New Carrollton, Maryland. It is a 1986 Chevy with a 600 cubic inch Chevrolet engine army. Richard, all the people that have been following the weekly Power Tracks program, they know the story about this guy. He is your national champion. He teamed up with Lee Edwards to make some awesome horsepower on the outside track. Inside, it's a whole new ball game for him. He's going to give it a shot, rolls out, good ground speed. Oh, we got a problem. Looks like a Marin shell on it, Richard. The back end comes up. That's an indication of something letting go at the 105. Big time problem for your defending national champion, Howard Lewis, and the Chevrolet High Roller shuts down at 105.38. Army, he's got to be disappointed. Howard, what exactly happened on the run? It seemed like you're making a lot of horsepower, and then bam, it went away on you. We were making a lot of horsepower. Everything was really rolling. It, uh, the truck really hooked in. I could tell by the RPM it was hooked in really hard, and something gave loose. I don't exactly know what it is, but we're going to get it fixed. The problem is in the front of the truck, though. Well, when you when you got a positive four-wheel drive system, you don't know if it's the front or the back because the whole system's tied in together. And we've got three more trucks to go with TNT Motorsports on Power Tracks. You seen no Chevy versus Ford test, right? That's three and counting our final three trucks in this class in competition. And the first of the three, Dave Willoughby out of Athens, Ohio, and a beauty of a Ford. It's the 40 Ford. You know, Ohio has long been known as a performance state. Some of the finest street rods, some of the finest drag racers, but this is a truck puller out of the Buckeye State going after a Georgia Ford. Richard, the ground speed is not there. He shuts it down. 159.96, a pretty good distance for Dave Willoughby out of Athens, Ohio. Not good enough to take over the lead, but Army, that is good enough for third place. Richard, Dave Willoughby just went up into the number three spot. It looked like an awfully good run, Dave. Well, we have uh, been working with the chassis all week long trying to get hooked up to this track. The long wait uh, to get Howard's truck off the track kind of lets the track sit and dry a little. I'm really surprised that we came up that far into the placing. But it did seem like uh, the adjustments we did make have worked, plus the gear ratio combination. And then there were two. And this is one of those Florida Ford drivers, Russell DeForest, the outlaw out of West Palm Beach, Florida. Army, tell us about the engine he's running. Builds his own engines, Richard, 700 plus cubic inches. He runs an auto brokerage operation out of West Palm Beach when he's not on tour with us. But right now, believe me, he wants to give Ford a one-two punch. I don't believe he's going to do it. No, sir, 156.02. That's going to be good enough for the top five. As a matter of fact, Russell will move into the number five place. And Army, it looks like the track is getting worse. Seems that way to me, Richard. We're down to one puller. It's going to be a Chevrolet out of Alabama. And this kid has his work cut out for him. It should be Randy McConnell. Out of Anderson, Alabama, it's called the Yellow Fever. And all the Chevy fans out there now are saying, can you drive over a Ford? Because Tony Osteen, our first puller in the competition, has held that distance up to maintain first place. Holstein was speculating the track would go away. That's exactly what's happened. But right now, a little one-on-one. -on -one. one Chevrolet going after one Ford for the number one position. Let's see what's going to happen. Chevrolet trying to take over Ford. He's getting good ground speed. He is rolling pretty good, Army. Right in the middle of the track. And then it goes away all of a sudden. The ground speed just went away from him. It sure did. A distance 152.62. That will finish up Randy McConnell in seventh place in this 4x4 competition. And Army, you're going to run down the top five. Top five this afternoon. Fifth place went to the fourth out of West Palm Beach, Florida. Allman took the number four spot. Dave Willoughby finished in third. James Hamilton, the Chevrolet second. But the winner, the number one puller in the class, Tony Olstein. And you know, Tony Olstein may be your favorite puller. How do you get in touch with him? Well, that's the subject matter of this week's Redman TNT All-American Question of the Week. 
And our question of the week about the Red Band TNT All-American Pulling Series comes to us from David White of Warren, Ohio. And David wants to know how he can correspond with his favorite pullers or monster truck drivers. Well, David, TNT Motorsports is glad to be the clearinghouse for these letters to your favorite drivers. All you have to do is put the driver's name on the envelope and mail it to TNT Motorsports, 5515 Poplar Park Boulevard, Louisville, Kentucky, 40228, and we'll see to it the drivers get the letters. By the way, that is also the address you send your questions of the week to. And if we use one of your questions on a future ESPN broadcast, we'll send you free a TNT Motorsports hat. Well, Army, are you ready for the real power? It is a 7,200-pound modified tractor, and we are going to be looking at unbelievable horsepower next. Richard, it's amazing the crowd appeal these vehicle has. John Carlson, the Virginia farmer, comes out with a triple motor supercharged Chevrolet combination for that number one spot working the right side of the track. And, of course, in this class, they can either run V8 automotive-type engines or the Allison aircraft engine. It is John Carlson with Chevrolet. that John Carlson, or as I call him, Big John Carlson, got to be happy and take that test pull. John Carlson, a 171.98. Are you going to keep that 171.98? Yeah, I won't take it, pull. Uh, have been running fairly straight all week, but it was about a nice pull. Oh, he gives it an A. Let's us give it an A+, plus, Army. Pretty good distance as we get ready for Fred Freeman out of Wadesville, Indiana, the mean mistreater. Fast Freddie Freeman out of Wadesville. Vietnam veterans serve with the 1st Air Cavalry Division being right now, but right now a war he has on his hands going after the Virginia Farmer. Engler chassis vehicle powered by Chevrolet again. Looking to the left, Richard. What would be an indication of that as we look at his distance? 156.04, Army. They've been talking about the track going away all evening long. It may go away, but then again, it could come back later in the class. Well, let's climb aboard our horse now. Get ready for the what I call the big, bad, black-hatted Paul Norman out of Charlotte, North Carolina. It is the All-Pro Auto Parts War Wagon. This young man is taking more wins on the indoor circuit with this triple engine Aries combination. Now look what he does. He's going to try to start on the left of the track and go to the right. Front end comes up. Everybody's running light on the nose, Richard. And he shuts her down at 166.99. Not anywhere close to our lead distance of Big John Carlton. And you know, knowing Paul Norman and how competitive he is, I've got a feeling he's not too happy with the pull. Oh, a 166.99, are you satisfied with that run? Not really, Army. Uh, we're still playing with the tractor, trying to get it dialed in. I believe we're going to have to drop a little bit of gear ratio in it. It hooked up good, it came out the hole good, but about half track, it lost power. We're just trying to turn too tall a gear in it this year. All right, we've still got three modified tractors to go. Can anybody knock off Big John Carlton? We'll find out next with TNT Motorsports on Power Tracks. Network. Warm up with TNT Motorsports in the wintertime. Chevy Trucks presents the Redman TNT All-American Pulling Series on February 24th through 26th at the Salt Palace in Salt Lake City, Utah. February 24th through 25th at the Greensboro Coliseum Complex in Greensboro, North Carolina. March 3rd through March 4th at the Birmingham Jefferson Civic Center in Birmingham, Alabama. March 10th through the 11th at the Texas Exposition Heritage Center in Austin, Texas. And March 10th through the 12th in UTC Arena in Chattanooga, Tennessee. The wild racing on the Renegades TNT Monster Truck Challenge continues on March 3rd through the 5th at the Nassau Coliseum in Long Island, New York. Come see TNT Motorsports and the nation's best trucks and tractors and monster trucks. Welcome back to Power Tracks. Richard Leake along with Army Armstrong. And Army, I hate using the old cliche, but here comes one of the best in the business, maybe the best right now, the defending Red Man champion, Pat Friels, out of Island, Kentucky, and the Dollar Devil. Well, the Dollar Devil won his national championship on the TNT Tour outdoors. We're stepping up. We're coming indoors. It's a whole new ballgame. Tires and gears so important. Light on the nose, Friels. Not where he wants to be with the ground speed. He has to find the indoor combination. 
Richard. Pat Friels is distance, 156.07. Army, it looked like he had a little bit of trouble at the start. Not able to plant the horsepower the way he normally does. Remember, his championship was won outdoors. All right, and we get ready for Wayne Sullivan. He's going to be our next puller coming out. And also John Carlton, our current leader. That's him waiting to see if anyone can knock him off. One guy that won't win today, Army's got now. Tractor looks to, to me this afternoon like you're making as much horsepower as everybody, but the track condition has so much to do with the finishing order, it looks like. Well, that's probably, horsepower had many a problem. You know, we run Chevrolets. We can run with the big aluminum motors had in, had in trouble. We are set up a little different for gear ratios and tires. My tires work good if it's a power track. When it gets to be a loose track, I have a little trouble with the whole shot. I get down in the track. I, I, my tires move so much dirt, once I get down, it's throwing it against the sled and I can't get going. We changed the air pressure today. I think it helped it. Well, I know it helped it today. So, but We had a terrible weekend, but I'm just glad to be here. And we'll see folks next time. Well, the story thus far here in Atlanta, then, is the first puller has the best chance to win because the track is going away. Here comes Wayne Sullivan out of Warsaw, Kentucky. He calls his tractor the Kentuckian, powered by 540 uh, cubic inch Rodak engine. Three of them put the horsepower down. He's a truck and executive out of Warsaw, Kentucky. He also went on the nose and took. But Richard, I tell you what, the track might just be coming back. Look at this run. A little burst of speed there at the end. 170.31, good enough for second place. Misses, taken over the lead from John Carlson by less than a foot. Uh, Army, there's a fire there on the engine. What's that? Uh, a little bit of an alcohol fire. They come over to knock it down, no problem. All right, so a great run there for Wayne Sullivan. And, of course, you think of pulling in Kentucky, you think of the Sullivan name, don't you? The Sullivan family. They are historic in this sport in the bluegrass state. Well, here we go for our final puller. It's got to be John Powell out of Apex, North Carolina. Line of the question, you think the track has come back or do you think it's still deteriorating? From what Sullivan just did, and knowing this man right here and the awesome horsepower that Chrysler Rangers make, we might just be looking at a winner right here. I think the track is coming back. The horsepower the Chrysler Rangers makes, he stacked it all the way to the right side. Watch for a bonsai shot. Powell has nothing to lose right now. He's drawing the worst position. over John Carlton, the Virginia farmer. Whoa, the track does come back, and it comes back in a big way for John Powell. All afternoon long, Richard, people have been talking about the track going away. Here's a man that drew the absolutely worst pulling position this afternoon, dead last in the class, and you nailed it. That was one beautiful shot, John. We really appreciate it, Dad. We knew it for one thing to do, Dad, was get on it quick. Uh, we was uh, tickled that the track held up good as it did. Everybody was talking about the sled getting real heavy, but you were just mile an hour and all the way through. Well, we've done a few changes to the truck the last week, made it a lot better. Well, uh, can we look for you chasing the rest of these red man points during 1989? Yeah, we're going to be in there. All right, Army, our congratulations to John Powell, our winner. I believe you've got the top five. Top five this afternoon at the Omni. Fifth place went to Frills out of Kentucky. Fourth place to Paul Norman out of North Carolina. Wade Sullivan from the Bluegrass finished third. John Carlton out of Virginia was second. And John Powell out of North Carolina takes a win. As always, the Omni provides some stories and pulling. Hey, so the story here is it doesn't matter if you're first or if you're last. Four-wheel drive, Tony Osteen came out first, he won it. And then Roberts, welcome to Power Track. We're in the Omni, Atlanta, Georgia, where Army Armstrong, we are about to kick off the 1989 Winter Pulling Series with the two-wheel modified class. One of the most popular classes in the sport, indoors, chasing the points. We're not even going to list the drivers that are going to be competing. We're just going to look at them tonight. Everybody that's anybody in this class is in this building. And the track here, we are indoors, which means a shorter track and hopefully a good track. It's going to be a real good track. The history of the track, they keep books on these tracks. The book on this track is the best indoor track in America, so it will hold the horsepower. So we've got good track and good competition. We're going to be back with all the action in just a moment on Power Tracks on ESPN. Atlanta, Georgia, where Army, we've got a great crowd on hand for this afternoon. Super modified, two-wheel drive competition. We are indoors, which means a shorter track and a different setup for the sled. 
Gary Soloway will be the sled operator this evening. What they're doing at this time, Richard, they're adding 2,000 pounds of dead weight to the skid pan. Now, normally in a pulling sport, you go off a transferred weight. Notice the TNT Motorsports box at the back. Normally, it would go forward, transferring the weight. This weight they're putting in right now will stay on the nose. 2,000 pounds of weight to start with on the nose. And, of course, in this type of competition with the super modified two-wheel drive uh, vehicles, driver skill is very important. Lane choice is what we're going to be looking at today. Where can you put the bike to the track? Speaking of lane choice, looks like the first puller's coming out, Richard. That is going to be Ronnie Poole out of Putnam, Georgia, and he's driving a vehicle he calls the Skyline Screamer. First stop with us on the tour, and it is a beautiful Chevrolet, red, white, and blue in color. Home State boy would like to put out a good shot. Like I say, he's new with us on the tour, would like to make some impression. He definitely has the equipment to do that. Now, this is our test puller, and he's got really an important decision to make here in a few minutes. His decision will be whether or not the sled is correct in his mind. That decision will be a three-way decision. Sled operator, track official, and the driver. In this case, a 149, not a bad run, Richard. 149.93, that is Ronnie Poole out of Putnam, Georgia. Now it is going to be up to Ronnie to either accept the pull or turn it down. If he turns it down, he'll come back later in the field. You see the official now asking for a thumbs up or a thumbs down. And it looks like Poole is going to take it, so obviously he's happy with it, Army. Sled set, and look who comes out. Speaking of Georgia, your national champion for all the Ford camps, the Stoll family pulling team with that awesome bad dog Ford. Mike Stowe, one of the fan favorites and also one of our favorites. We have a lot of fun with Mike on the circuit out of Warrington, Georgia, and the bad dog ready to rock and roll down the track. That looks like Santa Claus sitting in a grandstand. Everybody's having a good time at the Omni in Atlanta. They're watching the Ford take his shot. Father does the tuning, mom works all the books for the racing operation, but son does a super job of driving. Look at this! Richard, what a shot! He's trying to go on the other side of a 149. We will have a new leader. We have got a new leader at 161.19. Mike Stowe and the Bad Dog has established the distance to beat. That is George Milligan. He's coming up next, but now let's go trackside. You look like you're off to an awfully good 89 year. You made a whole lot of horsepower out there. Well, we finally got the motor to run a little better today. We've been having a little trouble with it this weekend. Just we went sea level last week, one, two out of three. Had a real good weekend to come back home and look like a king hit a bull in the, you know what, with a base fiddle. But I don't know. I think we're about to get it straightened out now. I wish we had another day, though. Well, can you tell that Mike Stowe is from the state of Georgia? I love his accent as we are getting ready next to see a former professional football player, George Milligan, used to be with the Tampa Bay professional football franchise. He gave it all up to move into truck and tractor pulling, and he is absolutely loving it. George coming out next in the I Rock and Roll. And earlier today, Army spent some time with George Milligan. George Milligan out of Evansville, Indiana. He'll be driving the I Rock and Roll Camaro, ex-football player for the Tampa Bay football franchise. You're into professional pulling now. How in the world did you get here? Well, I was born and raised on a farm down in southern Indiana, and I, all my life I've been interested in motorsports and racing. And one thing that I really always enjoyed was tractor pulling and blowing motors just always excite me. And uh, me and my dad, was uh, we sold some corn bins one day to a guy down in uh, Wadesville. And he was going to a tractor pull and he asked me, he said, what are you and your dad doing tonight? I said, oh, probably nothing. So he said, why don't you come down and watch me pull? So I did and Tim Engler happened to be there and I was hooked from that day on. That's all it took. So you're watching Tim, you're watching one of the best in the sport. Black athletes dominate a lot of sports. Motor sports, you don't find that many in. But you're very, very competitive. What is your reception like in this sport, and are you glad you're here? Yeah, I wouldn't trade this for nothing. Uh, I would like to be able to do this full time. If I had some more help, some more sponsors, some more money, you know, money's the key in anything. But uh, all the guys here, when I first started track and pull, when I first started running mini rods, all the guys have always helped me and made me feel at home. And uh, I'm the oldest black, but that don't seem to bother nobody because I don't have no problem getting help from nobody, barring parts. Everybody's always going to help me and try to help me get down the track if I'm having problems. Well, I think eventually George Milligan is going to be a force to be reckoned with on the circuit, Army. Definitely, but right now he's trying to get past 160 feet of 30-foot wide clay in Atlanta. Open field running at his best. Let's see what this man can do. Down the horsepower end. Good run. Lifts the front end a little bit. George Milligan. Whoa, a violent shutdown. What would cause that? 
What happened to Sled this caught him. He was getting near the sideline, so he backed on the throttle. All right, George Milligan goes 143.54, and his I Rock and Roll Camaro powered by the Arias 8.3 liter engine. And coming out next is a guy that I always consider a true legend in this sport. You know, he is a... Everybody knows about this gentleman. He's got a doctorate degree. He is definitely an asset to this sport. For the class guy in this sport, and I'm proud to say there's a whole lot of them, this is the leader of the pack right here, Wayne Roush with his Dodge-powered vehicle. Well, that's a 1923 Ford body on it, powered by a Keith Black Vinnie Hemi engine. Boo-boo horsepower, Roush rolls on the throttle, working the right side of the track, trying to go the other side of one, six, one, not going to do it, Richard. Distance, 143.54, that is good enough right now to move into third place. Wayne Roush at a double at Ohio, takes over third, but it is still the big bad dog out of Georgia. Mike Stowe with the lead, back with more action in a moment. We're in the Omni Atlanta, Georgia, super modified two-wheel drive competition continues. Coming out next out of St. Louisville, Ohio, Little Rascal and Jim Crabtree. I want to remind you of the drag racing days, a beautiful 1944 truck powered this time by a 512 cubic inch alcohol burning Chevrolet. Crabtree, very interesting individual. He's a machinist by trade. His wife follows the national circuit with us. She's a nurse. But this weekend, they're both truck pullers trying to lay down a shot. Works the middle of the track. Richard, a little bit of tire slippage on the start line. It's going to hurt his ground speed. Not where he wants it to be. The ground speed is not there, Richard. Fogging down and shutting down at 126.89. Not nearly enough to move up in the standings here in the Omni as we go trackside with Army. Yeah, we just will see we're at a 126.89. That'll put you in the number five spot. It looks awfully light on the nose. Well, I tried something different. I changed gears. I haven't been doing very good all weekend, and I think it was too tall gear. I just you know, didn't lock up quite the way. Didn't have the speed I needed. And coming out next to compete, one of the most beautiful vehicles on the circuit, the 1940 Willie. This is uh, Billy Johns and Willie Naked out of Adairsville, Kentucky. Richard, it kind of reminds you of the 1960s when uh, traveling across the country on a match race circuit. Trucks just like this. The 40 Willie. Stonewoods and Cook against Big John Masmanian. But right now, it's Willie Naked against the Red Man Sled. And it's not going to be the run that he was looking for. Only a 146. Well, to be exact, 146.72 Army. There you see Ken Lamont. He's coming out to compete a little bit later on, but now let's go trackside. Did Billy like his pull? Well, that don't make me real happy. I didn't get a good hole shot. It started real good, then it came up on you, but it started to settle back down again. Yeah. Well, there's room for improvement out there. <laughs> Well, coming back next in his second vehicle of the day, this is Wayne Roush, the little red truck. He's out of Dublin, Ohio. It's a 1986 Dodge with a KB Benny Dodge Jimmy engine. Remember, Roush is one of these individuals that takes two trucks to run in a class. He's already run. Looks like Gogo -Go found him some friends here in Atlanta. Roush has one run in. He's learned a little bit about the track. Let's see what he can lay down with this one. The little red truck. Definitely believes in that Chrysler horsepower. It's worked in the past. We'll see if it's going to work today. Good ground speed. Richard, we've got a good run going. He keeps the nose down on the ground. It's 139.73. That is not as good as his first pull army in the yellow Model T. So maybe he didn't learn as much as we thought. Looks like he had way too much nose weight on that run. All right, and coming out next, you know, Army, we always talk about the Ford versus Chevrolet. But in this competition today, we've got two Dodges. This is our second one. It's the Wild Ram, Jim Chapman out of Versailles, Kentucky. His friends call him Dick Chapman, and a nice-looking vehicle. Brand new to the tour. Now, he's stepping up into this class. He used to run the two-wheel drives. As a matter of fact, for years, he's running, but not the supercharged combination. He's stepping up this year. It's a whole new ball game for him. Let's just watch him and see what kind of shot he puts down. Not a good distance, Army. 127.08 for Jim Chapman in the Wild Ram. Go, go, the gorilla, directing traffic. A bad run. Let's go trackside. Sound like you're making plenty of horsepower. Look good. And all of a sudden, something went away. What was it? I just, this second weekend, I pulled this truck, and I just haven't got used to it yet. Think you'll be able to get the handle? Well, I think so. Thank you. Well, I'll tell you, Army, knowing Jim Chapman as I do, you better believe he'll come back and be a force to be reckoned with. That's Gary Soloway, our sled operator, and that is also the subject of the Redman TNT All-American Pulling Series Question of the Week.
And our question of the week about the Redman TNT All-American Pulling Series comes to us from Jeff Marshall of Byer, Pennsylvania. And Jeff wants to know how the sled is powered to return to the starting line. You know, Jeff, in the old days, they used to use either a semi or a front-end loader to pull the sled back. But now it is pretty well self-propelled. And I have with me Gary Soloway. Gary is the sled operator for the show in the Omni in Atlanta, Georgia. And Gary, tell us a little bit about how you get the sled back. Well, believe it or not, it is a, a Chevrolet uh, configuration. It's got a 350 Chevrolet engine in it with a three-speed automatic transmission and it just drives itself right back to the start line after a pull is made. So believe it or not, when you see this long sled going down the track, you're looking at a Chevrolet. And if you have a question of the week about the Red Man TNT All-American Pulling Series, send it to us at TNT Motorsports, 5515 Poplar Park Boulevard, Louisville, Kentucky, 40228. And if we use one of your questions on a future television broadcast, we'll send you free a TNT Motorsports cap. And once again, the address to send those questions of the week is TNT Motorsports, 5515 Poplar Park Boulevard, Louisville, Kentucky, 40228. And we'll be back with more action in the Omni in just a moment on Power Tracks. TNT! Tracks, Richard Leake along with Army Armstrong, where Richard Wisnett out of Union Grove, Alabama, and Hot Shot getting ready to come to the line. But Army, are you surprised that Mike Stowe, our second puller today, has held on to the lead as long as he has. No, not really, but I tell you, you still got to keep your eye on the back of the pack. Ken Lamont sits back there, the mini brute. This kid can nail you to the wall. You know, it's kind of interesting about this young man. He is not only runs a national tour with us, but during the summer month, he's also state champion in Kentucky, Tennessee, and Alabama, as well as running for the Red Man Point. Well, the gentleman you just saw there is the crew chief for Ken Lamont. He is watching where he hooks on the track as he is rolling. Hot shot working. Not the ground speed he was looking for, I know. Richard Wisnett is notorious for ground speed. It wasn't there, only getting a 145, Richard. 145.81, good enough for seventh place right now. Richard Wisnett in the 1986 Chevrolet. Let's go trackside. Army is going to find out what happened to Richard on that pole. And knowing this kid as I do, he is not going to be very happy with that distance. Richard, a 145.81. What did it feel like to you? Well, I had a pretty good hook. He started drifting over to the right, and I didn't have much speed, so I stayed off the brake and just let her run. Keep, you know, where I keep a little speed up. How come everybody's saying that left side of the track today? Uh, it seems to be the best part. The track seems like it's going away. The moisture's coming up in. All right, Sarmi, so that may not be good news for a gentleman like Ken Lamont, who's scheduled to come out in just a little while. Ken, your current red man, TNT All-American points leader. And as Richard Wisnett said, the track is going away. Is that good or bad news for these guys? I don't know. It depends on how they're going to figure it out. I'm looking at the lineup sheet. You have Lamont, you've got Mark Miller, Donnie Sullivan goes to the sled right now. Now, Richard, you talk about an interesting story. Third generation puller out of Warsaw, Kentucky, a small community up on the Ohio River. But every year when the Sullivans go pulling, the town empties out. Warsaw closes down on Christmas Day and the day of the National Farm Machinery Show because this family has won that prestigious indoor event nine times. Warsaw, Kentucky native, goes by the name of the Tough Cookie, third generation puller. The truck was built by his uncle, Eddie. His father drives in the modified tractor division. His grandfather, Pop, started it all. Let's see what this kid can do. Goes out, likes to run a light front end. That's the Sullivan trademark. He skies it right about half track, Richard. And shuts it down. 135.48. The graphic says 145. Actually, it's only 135. And Ken Lamont is scheduled up next, but it looks like he may have some problems with that Plano Midnight Express. Let's go trackside. Army's got Donnie Sullivan now. Uh, 135.48. You're in, in the eighth spot. Not exactly what you were looking for. No, we're trying a lot of different things on the truck and just I haven't figured them out yet. One thing we noticed you tried, everybody else is starting on the left, going straight or to the right. You started on the right and went to the left. Why'd you do that? Well, nobody else could find a good place to pull on the track, so I figured I'd try this side. That's, nothing's good out there right now. Well, we are down to our final three trucks, and scheduled out next is this kid, Ken Lamont, out of Crossville, Illinois, the plain old toolbox Midnight Express, but Army, big time problems for Ken. Definitely problems in the steering sector on the vehicle. And there's a pin that holds the steering knuckle together. That pin fell out. Now, some of the people going over to help him are his competitors. Stoll's over there, Roush is over there. They've all been in this situation, but right now, he's under a lot of pressure. Well, bad times right now for Ken Lamont, but I know earlier today, Army, you spent some time with him, and you talked about some of the good times. Well, after 18 years in the sport of pulling, starting literally in the bottom class, that being the garden tractors, Ken Lamont has worked his way to the top. 
The top being this time in the two-wheel drive super modified Midnight Express. Ken, if you had it to do over again, would you do it? Well, I've asked myself that a lot of times, Army. You'd... At times, I say, no, I wouldn't do it. At times, I'm tickled to death I'm still in it. There has to be peaks and valleys in any pursuit like this. Now, your goal is to be a national champion again. You've won two national championships. Peaks and valleys, where are they in this sport? Well, right now I'm in a peak because we've been running super tough this weekend. Last weekend was a valley. I blew a motor and we worked all week long, myself and the crew, trying to get this thing ready to go again. In answer to your first question, uh, if this is as far as the sport's going, I wouldn't do it all over again. That's 18 years of my life. I, I'm only 30 years old, you know. Uh, but I think you're looking at early NHRA or early NASCAR, and if that's the case, I want to stay on top of this thing, you know. And it, if it is going like I think I am, I'm tickled to death I'm still involved in this sport. The sport, five years from now, where is it going to be? You're talking about NHRA, you're talking about NASCAR, very established, they have a following. You feel like this sport's generating a following? Yeah, and it's due to the television coverage. Uh, without the media, the sport's never going any farther. But television is an amazing piece. Once the American public sees it on TV, then it's real. You know, I've been doing it 18 years, and only in the last two or three, people around home know that I'm doing it because of television. Things are really going good. We just, I don't know, it seems like in other motorsports, um, the only way to keep yourself alive is with sponsors. And the only way to get a sponsor is with impressions and what have you on television. If you're on television, learn how to use it. You know, I, I'm not any kind of magician. I work my tail off trying to get these sponsors. I work harder on that than I actually do probably competing. But it's just, I don't know, it's an inner drive inside of you wanting to do that, you know, wanting to be a success and wanting to be good. Well, Ken Lamont is a success. He's your current national leader on the Redman TNT All-American Pulling Series circuit. How good is he? Hopefully we're going to get to find out as we are down to our final two trucks of competition in the Omni Atlanta, Georgia. Back with more on Power Tracks in a moment. Yes, the Total Sports Network. Warm up with TNT Motorsports in the wintertime. The Redman TNT All-American Pulling Series stages the country's largest and oldest indoor truck and tractor pull on February 15th. In Atlanta, Georgia, we are down to our final two pullers in the competition. And Army, thus far, we've seen a lot. Are you surprised at what we've seen? No, Richard, really I'm not. My, the leader said earlier he had been having problems this year getting horsepower, but the leader, the Bad Dog Ford, is back in his home state at his home altitude on his home plate. I think that's why he's out there. Also, he had an awfully good draw. And coming out next is going to be Mark Miller. He is out of Richmond, Virginia. He calls it the Mini Brute. It's a Chevrolet. All Chevrolet. 512 cubic inch alcohol burning Chevrolet. Beautiful candy apple, brandy whining color. Now, he's kind of a second generation puller. His uncle, John Carlson, competes for the Redman points in the modified tractor division. This young man travels all around the country chasing the points in the two-wheel drive division. And, of course, big John Carlson drives the Virginia Farmer. We'll see him on future power track shows but right now the distance to beat is 161.19 that distance held by Mike Stone the bad dog here goes the mini Bruce Chevrolet going after the four Chevrolet working the left side of the track the ground speed's not there he's getting awfully close Richard he shuts it down a nice pull 147.08 for Mark Miller that is going to be good enough to move him into the top five and fifth place let's go trackside Army's got Mark now he went a 147.08. It looked awfully light on the nose. Yeah, it was light. The track has gone away from what it was at first. I went ahead and gambled and took some weight off the front end. And when I had to hit on the, get on the brakes for going to the left side, it really hurt me. Is there a good side and a bad side of this track? Everybody seems to be working off the left side better than the right. I don't know. Last night we thought it was the right side. The left side didn't seem to work. And today I don't, they're just looking for a good place on the track because they're in as, in as good as it has been. Well, even though the Redman TNT All-American Pulling Series circuit is only a few weeks old, Army, we have already established two guys that are going head-to-head. -head. One is Mike Stowe, bad dog, your current leader. The other one is this kid right here, Ken Lamont, the Plano Toolbox Midnight Express. It looks like he has got his problem solved, and they are going to fire up the engine. Well, the drama is definitely going to build here in Atlanta. He only dropped one spot, Richard. That's not going to hurt him, but he had a bad draw to start with. You've got to remember, the leader four drew the number two position. In actuality, he drew, he being the Midnight Express, drew the second from the last position. Due to the problems, he dropped last. The worst possible position 
The worst possible scenario for this run is going to take place right now. And already Richard Wisnut, one of our earlier competitors, said the track was going away. So Ken Lamont out of Crossville, Illinois, the uh, Midnight Express machine, definitely the odds are against him. The odds are against him, but I tell you, right now, if he can pull up, I'll be real honest with you, if this kid gets a top five finish, Pulling at the last of the class, he has done his work. And of course, that will keep him in the lead on the Red Band TNT All-American Pulling Series circuit. And here goes Ken Lamont, the Midnight Express. Starts to roll, looks good, powers up. Richard, we've got a good run going to Plano Toolbox Midnight Express. Look how close it is. Oh, he just missed it, 160.14. Ken Lamont is gonna take over second, not get the win, but a great run for Ken Lamont. So our winner is Big Bad Dog Mike Stowe out of Georgia. Army's got the champ now. Well, Richard, earlier in the show, you were talking about how tough Mike Stowe was gonna be. The drawing position did not hurt you one bit tonight, young man. No, it didn't, it really didn't. We've had trouble all weekend. We come indoors and the altitudes changed. Temperature changes, it's winter time, it's been raining. We've really had a problem all week getting the motor running. Finally got it running pretty good today. Second hook didn't hurt me a bit. The track didn't get any better. It got worse for a while, I believe. And then towards the end there, Ken had a little trouble. And they just kept working the track. And boy, I was really scared he was going to blast me there. Kenny's been running like gangbusters all weekend. Really great. It's going to be a battle. Well, I really like that guy. Mike Stowe, congratulations. There you see Billy Joe Miles, one of the principals of TNT Motorsports presenting Jim Crabtree and his wife Shirley, the exquisite uniform company sportsmanship award. Jim earned that during competition here in Atlanta. Army, you've got the top five. Richard, the top five finishing order today, Mark Miller out of Virginia, fifth. Ronnie Poole, brand new truck, took fourth. Wayne Rouse, Old Faithful, was third. Ken Lamont, second place, and Mike Stowe, the winner out of Georgia. So the story in Atlanta, Georgia, is Mike Stowe and Ken Lamont have started 1989 just like they finished 1988 going head to head. Today, it was Mike Stowe's turn. Tomorrow, who knows? For Army Armstrong, I'm Richard Leake. We'll see you again on the tracks across America. Join us next time for Power.